the Thunderbird is, and always has been, a failure. A base that persists largely because it is objectively cool looking, but much like Narcissus, its looks are its own undoing. Designed by a car engineer in the early 60s, the T-Bird was created by Gibson to compete with the runaway success of Fender's 34-inch scale P and J bases. Poor sales and a lawsuit led to a redesign, but after a disappointing six years of production, Gibson discontinued the T-Bird in 1969. Something this bad could only be conceived by a non-musician. Because for all of its swagger, it commits the most egregious bass guitar sin. Neck dive. Ironic, isn't it? That a bass named for a bird so aggressively seeks the ground? Why, Mr. T-Bird, doth the floor call thy name? Most basses feature an upper horn that stretches out to the 12th fret, i.e. the center mass of the bass. When the weight on the body side of this lever point is slightly greater than the neck side, you achieve balance, and when it's not, you get neck dive. The T-Bird's reverse body design puts the strap button way back here and makes it much harder to balance, a fact not helped by how far its neck stretches away from the body. It's a standard scale length at 34 inches, but because of where the bridge is positioned and how oversized the headstock is, it fights against balancing, but also makes it feel much bigger than other bases. Reaching to the first fret feels like much more of a stretch. For a taller person, this might be less of an issue, and I think it's no coincidence that guys like Nirvana's Chris Novoselic main T-Birds, but for average and shorter guys like me, this extra length is an aggravation and makes playing way more difficult. Opposite the oversized headstock, we have the infamous three-point bridge. It would be just fine if you'd never had to adjust it, but in our reality, physics exists, so adjustments have to be made from time to time. Neither string height nor intonation are as easy to dial in on this as it is on Fender-style bridges, as its design puts adjustment screws in places where they're blocked by pickups and strings and doesn't allow for individual string height. The entire bridge has to be adjusted as a whole, which makes every adjustment a compromise. Oh, right. Never mind. Hold on. This bridge design drives me insane. Additionally, these bridges are somewhat prone to pulling out of the body entirely. It's pretty telling that on Gibson's higher-end signature T-Birds, they use hip shot bridges instead. No professional wants to deal with this objectively inferior bridge design, and neither should you. If you're wondering if this bass has a single redeeming quality, the answer is yes. But it has only one. The tone. This is the reason why people put up with these basses. It's not right for every kind of music or every person, but if you slam this thing with a pick into the right amp, it's pretty good. Oh my gosh, all these criticisms are so stupid. You can move the strap button to fix the neck dive, and then you can put whatever bridge you want on. You people, you just like to complain. You're not wrong about being able to fix these kinds of issues, but why would I work that hard for what I consider to be a pretty niche sound, especially when there are alternatives that don't require all that extra work to be good? The pros and cons of this bass are just out of balance. As someone who highly values ergonomics and versatility, I just can't get along with this thing, and so I must sell it. In fact, I'm going to be getting rid of a lot of gear here pretty soon, so if you want to go through all of that with me, join me on my next video where I'm going to Marie Kondo this bitch. <laughs>